over there tagged as CP, and I'm, so I've got a bunch that that he hits that he hit me on. But one that continues to trigger with me is don't spoil your talent. All of us on our rosters probably got some guys that got some legitimate talent, and some guys maybe not so much. But you don't want to spoil this talent by over information, over coaching, making it too complicated. And so you've got some talent on the roster, you want the talent to take over, and it got into this idea of simplification. And so there was an article back in the day that I read that I continue to go back to. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And this is all the way back to Leonardo da Vinci, that this guy's writing an article and he's talking more about presentations when people speak and, and, and try to process information. And I don't know if you guys can read, see that all the way to the back, so I'm gonna read it. More often than not, we have the tendency to complicate rather than simplify. I think about me, I coach the quarterbacks. There's a lot of information you can be given them, right? Your drop, the play clock, the coverage recognition, if the will linebacker is in the A gap versus the B gap, that's a recognition of coverage, the safety, the weak side safety, where's he going? He's gonna tell you a bunch of what coverage you're getting. Blitz recognition, you're getting blitz, you gotta have an answer over here, over there, it can get really, really complicated, okay? And that was me as a young coach, trying to like, get up in front, show how much I knew to express it to the player, but ultimately, the player's gonna play the best when his talent can take over, not spoiling his talent, but over complicating things. We assume that sophistication equals results, brilliance, performance, intelligence, but ultimately it doesn't. More information, more choices, more products is not better. In fact, it's the exact opposite. More is actually less, it can cause your audience, which you get, I'm thinking about teaching here, can cause your audience to disengage. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And I think about some of the best offenses around. I remember when Lincoln Riley had it really going at Oklahoma, and they were scoring a bunch of points. Yes, he had some talent, but you watched them, it looked like they were only running about five or six plays total. The thing looked simple off the tape, but there was some legitimate sophistication to what they were doing, but they found ways to simplify it. Too much information can cause confusion. I think about that. You're spoiling your talent, you got a big time player, but oftentimes, if that if you want that talent to take over, you've got to keep it simple for him. Find a way to keep it simplified so their talent takes over. When they start to play slow is when they're really thinking about things. They want to be reactive and go. Too much info can cause confusion, misunderstanding. The audience might forget or miss your point entirely because you've overcomplicated the thing. Here's a simple solution. Start with the main idea and build everything around it. And so I think about coaching. I might have team meetings. And I want to start my team with, hey, this is the main thing, the main point I want to get across. Yeah, I'm going to detail some other, other stuff throughout the meeting, but this is the main couple of points I'm trying to make. Detail some things, but I'm going to end right back where I started and try to keep it simple on the main, main thing. Don't spoil your talent. Boise State, when I was there, his name is Robert Prince. Robert Prince is currently the receiver coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And so when I came on RP, he went by. RP was the offensive coordinator. He coached the receivers. I coached the quarterbacks. And so us, we worked hours together, in and out, in and out. And he had this term of measure twice, cut once. I think he got it from back in the day, you know, book, the art of war type thing. But really, the point he would make about it, we were drawing diagrams of making sure, measuring twice before we press print and sit the thing out. But that term, measure twice, cut once, had grown into a lot of how we operate. Especially, I think about the last month and a half of how fast things go, right? You got the job into November, portal opens. You got 30 days to chase down this portal at the same time, right in the middle of the portal, you got a signing day of December, whatever it was, 18th to 20th. You're trying to build a staff, right? And there's some serious urgency to get the staff put together and everything is moving fast. At the same time, just because those dates were there, they weren't gonna allow my, to dictate my timeline on making some decisions on some of this personnel and staff. And so measuring twice, putting some thought into before you press and print, 
I think it's the same way as we're adding to our roster of you. It's so much chaos, urgency, immediate gratification. Some of the times that filter in your decision making gets out of whack when you're trying to go too fast. You slow down, make sure you measure twice and only cut once. I found that that's really helped me in this, in this profession. The 85% rule, this is going back now, this is about five years ago. The current president, again, I was my first head coaching job was at Oregon State. Ended up having lunch with the current president there. His name was Ed Ray. He was president of the university for over 20 years. He retired just a couple of years ago. We're at lunch and we're just talking about leadership and you know those that are underneath you and how you work with them and, and help them improve and, and this type of thing. And he got into this like, you know, Jonathan, it's really important that you follow the 85% rule. And I'm just like, 85% rule, you don't, you don't hear much about that. You hear about 110%, you 85% rule. And where he's going on that is oftentimes with people underneath him or the employees that he had, he's always focused on, right, constant state of improvement, helping them improve. Where they're falling short, that you want to help them continue to do that. And oftentimes, that's that 15%, that needle you're trying to push and get them better past that 85%, get them into the 95% or 100% type thing. But he, he, he hit me on, but you can't lose sight. There's 85% that's pretty damn good of these people that are working with or the guys that are trying. And that always stuck with me a little bit, yes, we are always trying to help people improve, always finding ways that like, hey, they can take the next step. But not just disregarding of 85%. Shoot, they might have been at 65% at some point and continue to progress. I spun that as also how we evaluate and we look at our own players. Yes, are we trying to help them improve, push the needle, always and you know, find the ways to take a step in their game? 100%. But without, we're not just disregarding how far they've come before. The 85% that they do great. The employees or the people that work at them, 85% their loyalty and work ethic, they're detailed on these things, they're an expert in these areas, not just disregarding that from our mind. It's oftentimes all we do is sit there and focus on the 15% where they're falling short. Huge for me, that impactful for me, 85% rule from Ed Ray back in the day. So I got the job again at Boise State. That was the first time under a new system, new offense. And the head coach at the time, the name Chris Peterson. I replaced a guy named Brian Harson. Brian Harson, formerly the head coach at Auburn, uh, done some big time things. He's a boy. He, he was the OC that I kind of replaced coaching the quarterbacks. And he's Coach Pete sent me down to the University of Texas. Brian Harson was the coordinator at the University of Texas at the time. Spent a day with him talking about all kinds of things, learning the scheme, offensively, quarterback play, a bunch of different stuff. But he talked about this idea, and some of you guys might have heard this, but don't mistake routine for commitment. And so sometimes, all of us, but players especially, they got into this routine of just checking the box, okay? I showed up to the workout, I got through it, and that, that's what I do. The routine of, okay, Tuesday's this, Wednesday's that, get to Thursday, but I'm ready to roll on Saturday. You just fall into your routine of doing things. Don't confuse that with truly being committed, day in and day out. Practice, one practice to the next, uh, one rep to the next, and truly committed to this idea of getting better. Don't confuse it. All of us got routines, all of us are just daily, want to be organized and scheduled out, and that's a routine, but not getting that confused with really truly being committed. Learned that from Coach Harris back in the day, and that, that stuck with me as we go through things moving up moving forward.